When you don't have a lot of space to work with, these mini time period buttons are great for letting users filter visual by time periods, like the last seven days, last quarter, or the last year. And the filtered visual will dynamically update to show the top 10 products for the selected time period. So I'm going to start off on a new worksheet to create the mini time period buttons first. The first calculated field I need to create is for the specific time identifier. And so I don't waste time typing it out, I'm just going to copy and paste the formula in here. This formula assigns a specific time period label based on the value of the order dates relative to today's date. So it's classifying each order into a single time period. So for example, this first line is saying if the date of the order date equals today, then return 1D for the label, which represents one day. And this last line is saying if the year of the order date equals the year of today, then return 1Y, which represents the current year. And because these time periods overlap, like the last day and the last seven days both contain today, I need another field that accounts for this. Since this field will have a similar structure to our specific time identifier, I'm going to duplicate the field and I'll name this one the general time identifier. And this one's just going to change the assignment from one time period to multiple overlapping time periods. So for example, one day is in the last seven days, one month, one quarter, and one year. So on this first line, I've just typed out every time period with a comma separating them. And I'll do the same thing for the other lines that have date ranges that apply to multiple of our assigned time periods. So for year, I'll just leave that as one year since the date range doesn't apply to any of our other time periods. To create the structure of the buttons, I'll first move the general time identifier field into the columns. And you can see there's a null because not all of the dates within our data set fall into one of these time periods. To remove the null from the buttons, I'm going to pull the general time identifier field into the filters. And I'll exclude the null. But the general time identifier isn't super intuitive to users, so I'm going to pull the specific time identifier field into the marks. And I'll make this a label. You can easily tell these are out of order when you look at the specific time identifier. So I'm going to right click on the general time identifier to sort it. I'll choose to sort by manual, and I'll put these in order so that the smallest time period range, which is one day, is on the left hand side. And the largest time period range, which is one year, is on the right hand side. And we don't need the general time identifier header anymore, so I'm going to remove this. That way users are only interacting with the specific time identifier field. And we need a variable to store our time periods. So I'll create a parameter for the mini time buttons. I'll change the data type to a string, and then the allowable values choose a list. I'll add values to the list using our specific time identifier field. I need to create another calculative field to turn these labels into a bar with buttons on it that are responsive to whether the time period is selected. So this will be if the specific time identifier equals the mini time buttons parameter, then the string T, else the string F. And because I'm using a button bar with rounded ends, I not only need to know whether it's selected or not, I also need to know what the position of the button is. So that's why instead of doing the boolean for true and false, I did a string. That way I can add our specific time identifier field to identify the position. Then I'll change the mark type to a shape and add our specific time select field to determine the shape. And you can see it created a combination of whether it's selected or not and the actual time period. I'll use these shapes created in Canva, which I'll link below. And you can see one month is in the middle and it's not selected. So I'm going to choose this empty bar. And I'll do the same thing for the one quarter and the seven days. Since one year is on the right and it's false, I'll choose the shape with the rounded right end that's not filled. Since one day is on the left but it's true, I'll choose the shape that's rounded on the left and filled in. Then you can use a size slider and drag it down to see the shapes. And to get the text in the middle, I'll use label and center this horizontally. 
Then I'll format the text so that it's Tableau regular. I'll quickly format the worksheet, and for shading, I'll choose None. Then for borders, I'll remove the row divider. That way we're left with just the buttons. On a dashboard, I'll add our Mini Time Buttons worksheet. I'll hide the title of the worksheet and then resize it to be above where I want the visual to be. And I'll also set this to the entire view. To make the buttons interactive, I'll go to the Dashboard tab at the top and hit Actions. I'll add a Change Parameter action for the Mini Time Buttons. For the source sheet, I only want the Mini Time Buttons worksheet checked off. I'll target the Mini Time Buttons parameter and use the specific time identifier as the source field. Now when I click on a button, you can see the shapes change, but we need to assign the correct shapes. I'll use our legend to edit the shapes. And since 7 days is true, and it's one of the middle pieces, I'm going to assign it the rectangle bar with the circle in the middle. Since one day is false, and it's on the left, I'll assign it the shape with the rounded left end that has no circle. I'll go through and assign each button to its opposite state, selected or not selected, and apply the correct shape. That way we get a mini time period button bar with rounded ends, where the selected value displays a white circle within the shape. And we don't need the legend or parameter anymore, so I'm going to remove these. And now that we can interact with the buttons, we need a visual that we can apply these filter buttons to. On a new worksheet, I'll create the visual, which will be for the subcategory using a bar chart. So I'll start off by adding subcategory to the rows. And I want these to be gradient rounded bar charts, so I'm going to add measure values to the columns. I'll type 0 within our measure values and the count distinct of the order ID, which is the metric that I want these bars to represent. Then I'll remove all the other measure values. I'll change the mark type to a line and make measure names determine the path of the line. And as I increase the size, you can see these are rounded bars. Instead of including all the subcategories, I just want to see the top 10 products based on the number of orders for the given time period and I want them to be sorted based on the number of orders for the time period as well. So I'll create a calculated field for the filter slash sort feature. And first I need to identify the orders for the selected time period. So I'll say if the general time identifier contains the mini time buttons parameter, then give me the order IDs. And I want the number of orders, so I'm gonna wrap this in the count distinct function. Then I'll wrap this in the rank unique function, so it'll give a unique ranking based on the number of orders that match the selected time period. I'll pull this field into the filters, and you can see we have 15 subcategories, which is why we have a range from 1 to 15. But if I change the end of the range to 10, for example, we get the top 10 subcategories based on the number of orders within our selected time period. So you could do top 5 or whatever number you want to choose, but I'm going to keep this at top 10. To sort this, you would usually already have a field with your metric in it, but currently we don't because we typed everything in the shelf. So I'm going to create a calculated field for the count distinct of the order ID. And I'll type the count distinct of the order ID. Then I'll right click on subcategory to sort it, and I'll sort this by a field. I'll choose the count distinct of the order ID and put this in descending order so we get the subcategory with the most orders at the top. For coloring, I want to make these gradient bars, so I'm going to move measure names into the marks and make this a color. Then I'll edit the colors and choose similar colors I have to the background of the dashboard. For formatting, I'll start by removing the header. Then I'll hide the field label and format the worksheet to change the font to be a bit darker. For shading, I'll choose none for the worksheet. And for lines, I'll remove these zero lines and the access rulers. For the column lines, I'll remove the grid lines. 
Then on a dashboard, I can add my subcategory worksheet. I'll hide the title of the worksheet and remove the legend. Then I'll position this worksheet so it's under our mini time period buttons. And I'll set this to the entire view. I also want to label this visual, so I'm going to add a text box object. I'll call this Top 10 Products and change the font to be Tableau Regular, size 14, and black. Then I'll position it above our mini time period buttons. You can see when I click on one of the time periods to filter our visual, there's a lot of information in the tooltip. So I'm going to go to the Buttons worksheet, click on Tooltip within the marks, and remove everything that's in there. So now users can interact with the time period buttons and it updates the visual for the top 10 products for that time period. These are great for when you don't have a lot of space to work with, but you still want to give users the option to intuitively filter by time periods.